to praise. I'm free to lift up holy hands and magnify His name. His name, I am free to worship, free to praise. I'm free to lift up holy hands and magnify His name. Free to worship, free to praise. I'm free to lift up holy hands, magnify. It's free, it's free is he. It's free is he. He whom the sun sets free is free is he. He whom the sun sets free. Free to praise. I'm free to lift up holy hands and magnify his name. I am free to worship. Free to praise. I'm free to lift up holy hands and magnify his name. Free to worship. Holy hands 
Praise the Lord. He is here. Praise the Lord. I, I pray that we're conscious of that tonight. Pray that we're conscious of the presence of God. Praise the Lord. He is here. He is here. Praise the Lord. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? He is here. He is with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Where two or three, I, I have grown, if I, you'll allow me to say it, to almost dread that verse being quoted, but in this context, not as an excuse for a low crowd, but in this context, it's all right. He is here. 
Because we're gathered in his name. He is here. Because he promised he would be. He is here. Because he inhabits the praises of his children Israel. We are grafted in. Hallelujah. He is here. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You are faithful, Lord. You are here, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Crystal, won't you and Selena and Silas come get ready to sing? As they're coming, Brother Scott, will you come take us to prayer tonight? Do you mind? Come ahead. Praise the Lord. It is good to feel the presence of the Lord in the house of God tonight. If you will indulge me just for a moment, I would like to read a portion of Scripture. Amen. I am not the preacher, and don't worry, I will not take off, I promise. Amen. Amen. You know, we talk about um, that Scripture Pastor quoted, you know, he... You know, um, where there's two or three are gathered, right? You know, and we 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 talk, we we quote that scripture. I think we quote it sometimes to make ourselves feel good when we don't or disappointed <laughs> at at the at the things that we're seeing or the crowd maybe or whatever. But in First Samuel chapter 14, I like what the Lord allowed the writer to to put in his holy word. In verse number 6 of chapter 14 of 1 Samuel, it says, Jonathan said to, his, to the young man that bare his armor, Come, let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many, or by few. Mm. I know that the Lord is here. Amen. Two or three are gathered. We, we all know that. But I'm telling you what. I don't know about you, but I have had a week that I need something more than just a, a, a two or three gathering. If you know what I'm saying. I, I need something more. I, I, need, I need the Lord to come by in a mighty way where I can say to my brother and my sister, let's go praise the Lord, because there is no restraint to the Lord. Amen. There is no restraint to the Lord. It doesn't matter how many are there. Amen. Amen. We can win this battle because there's no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Hallelujah. I am glad this evening to know that the Lord is not limited by numbers. Amen. He doesn't have a minimum requirement. He doesn't have a minimum, uh, and, and I know we that scripture we do quote it. To, uh, two or three are gathered, but really the context of that is if there be just a, a couple of people that will get together and get in the mind of God and get into the presence of God, there is no restraint to the Lord. Amen. To what He would do for us. Amen. Amen. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord here. I feel the presence of the Lord here, church. I'm thankful. I'm thankful we, we couldn't come on Sunday because of the roads. And I was, uh, I, I, we watched online, and Gabe said, Dad, I hate online church. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm, I'm thankful for the technology. Amen. But I tell you what, I, I felt the boys were sitting over there on the, on the couch, and I was sitting in a folding chair, and my wife was in my recliner. And I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm back in the preacher. And I can just feel eyes on me like, what is that crazy guy doing? He can't hear a word you're saying. Amen. But I tell you what, I, I know my Lord can reach across time. Yeah. He's not limited, Brother Mike, by space. You know, when I'm, when I'm here, Brother Al, I can't be, when I'm standing here, I can't be standing beside you. But my Lord's not limited by that. Right. Amen. Amen. I like when the centurion came to Jesus and he said, Lord, I, I'm not worthy to be for you to enter my house. All you got to do is speak the word and it'll be done. All you got to do is speak the word. Amen. We serve a God, amen, who is not limited by time, 
He's not limited by space. He's not limited by numbers. He's not limited uh, 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 by circumstance. He doesn't, he doesn't have any limitations. Amen. When we call upon him, we call upon the creator of the universe, the one who hung the worlds into existence with just the spoken word. Amen. And I'm thankful for that tonight. Anybody on this side with a prayer request? Amen. How about over here tonight? Looks like we've got some sickness going through the through the house. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody up here? Please continue to remember my dad in prayer. Um, as I we showed some pictures to Pastor, um, just he is when I say he is literally skin and bones. I am not exaggerating. Amen. He is, he's probably on his last um, last mile of his journey, and um, I know he's ready to go. Be with him as he makes that crossing. Amen. I'm thankful tonight. I'm not trying to end anything or start anything on a sour note. I'm happy in God. Amen. Are you happy in God tonight? Amen. Has he been good to you? Did he save you? Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Did he wake you up this morning? Of course he did. Amen. So that's a crazy question, brother. We're all staring at you. Of course he woke us up this morning. Amen. But I tell you what, we sometimes we forget the little things God does for us. Amen. We couldn't tell. We couldn't tell it. Brother Buzz, if we tried to write down all the blessings of God, we'd forget them. Amen. Everything that he does for us. I passed about 50 or 60 deer on the way here tonight, and not a one of them Pat jumped out in front of me. They all stayed in the field. That's a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. And given my track record especially. There back in you know a couple years ago. I'm thankful for the Lord this, this evening. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for these and ask God to move for these needs. Heavenly Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We know that we're nothing without you. And we are thankful that we have felt your presence in this place. Oh, it is by the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Amen, amen. But your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness to us, Lord. God, we're asking for those that are sick in body tonight, for those, Lord, uh, 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 the Carnes family tonight, Lord, for Sister Betty, Lord, for Brother Brandon. We're asking, God, that you would move, Lord, God, in their lives, Lord, that you would touch their bodies tonight, that you would strengthen them and quicken them. Lord, we don't have to be in their presence. All you have to do is speak the word and answer to our prayers, and you can touch them and give them hope. I, I pray, Lord, for my dad, that you would continue to touch him, Lord. We pray for Sister Margaret, Lord, that you would give her traveling mercy. Lord, for the continued war in Ukraine, we pray, God, that you would just touch the, the Christians on both sides of that conflict, Lord, that you would give them strength, that you would give them anointing. Lord, in the dark times, we pray that you would let their lights shine before men, that they would see your good, the good works and glorify their Father, which is in heaven. Lord, we just ask, God, for the remainder of this service, Lord, that your presence would be with us and be sweet to us, Lord. God, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just strengthen us, Lord, strengthen us, Lord, for the journey as we, as we go forth, amen, from this service. In Jesus' precious name, we ask these things, amen and amen. thankful for the Lord. Um, it's been a while since um, I've even tried to play this, so hopefully I remember how, but I was thinking about um, when Sister Amanda was singing, He is here. It made me think about how God is anywhere that you are. And um, there was an article I read, probably on social media, that about a cancer patient, and she said she found God on the bottom, on the bathroom floor. And um, and I just thought about that, and I thought, you know, there's sometimes life just hits you, 
and you fall to your knees, and wherever you are, you call on his name, and he's right there. No matter where you are, no matter what your circumstance is, it doesn't matter. Um, he is right there when you call his name. And I'm so, so thankful. The Bible says he's a present help in the time of, of need. And I'm so thankful because I've experienced that present help so many times. There are days I feel the enemy surrounding me. That if I breathe, he will come and devour me. But I just speak his name. I speak his name. I speak his name. Such a wonderful name, Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus, oh, Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. He made the lame to walk. He made the dumb to talk, caused the blind to sing. He made a way for me when I was down and out in deep despair. My Savior came and he found me right there. Then he brought me out. Yes, he did. And there's no doubt, Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Whatever you need, Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. He made the lame to walk. He made the dumb to talk. He caused the blind to see. And I don't know Savior came and he found me right there, but then he brought me out, and there's no doubt, Jesus, there's something about the name of Jesus, there's healing in the name of Jesus, there's peace in the name, in that precious name, Jesus, Jesus, there's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Whatever you need, Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. There are days I feel the enemy surrounding me. That if I just breathe, he will come and devour me. But you know what? I speak his name. I speak his name. I speak his name. Such a wonderful name, Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. He made the lame to walk. He made the dumb to talk. Caused the blind to see. Oh, and he made a way for me when I was so down and out in deep despair. My Savior came and he found me there. But then brought me out hallelujah and there's no doubt Jesus there's something about that name Jesus there's
There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Come on his name, Jesus. There's something about the name, Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thankful for the name that's above every name. Grab your Bibles. Turn to Jude, chapter number one tonight. Thank you, musicians. Folks, Amanda, you might want to bring some over there so if these folks are falling, you can make your way. But anyways, Jude Chorus, chapter one, and verse number 17. It always tease. My Bible teacher at my Christian school I went to in high school say, you've been reading your Bible? I said, I'd say, I read a whole, bu- a whole book today. I would say, Jude. I said, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. Jude chapter number one, and we're just going to read uh, 17 through 23 for sake of uh, context. But really, we're just going to focus in on one verse, and I pray that the Holy Ghost will come by and help me tonight, anoint me, and I didn't, um, I, I didn't get to do this justice, but this is what I feel like for tonight, and I might give myself permission to re-preach it sometime, uh, even in the midst of the same folks that are here tonight, who knows, but Jude chapter 1 and verse number 17, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their ungodly lusts, that these be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of good preaching in those verses. And uh, if you'll bear with me tonight, I want to focus in on verse number 20 as part of our series here on praying fervently and effectively. And I want to focus in on verse number 20. But ye, beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And that's just going to be my title tonight, if you'll allow me. Praying in the Holy Ghost. God, we need your help tonight. Lord, I feel my frailty and my weakness, but God, I am reminded that your word promises that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. God, I stand on your word tonight, and I, I declare that to be true in our midst, Lord. I am not focused on the folks in here tonight, Lord. I feel an unction from on high. God, I pray that as I preach on praying in the Holy Ghost, that this Holy Ghost that we're preaching about, that he will come into our midst and fill us, Lord, and strengthen us and go before us, Lord, and work this in our hearts. Lord, we love you and we're thankful for you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost is real. It's not, it's not the ghost that we see, the little booger mans running around here around uh, October 31st on Halloween, Halloween. The Holy Ghost is real. He is a person. He is the third person of the Trinity. I will not try to describe the Trinity to you because I feel like man falls far short for God's ways are above our ways. Uh, it is St. Patrick's Day today. And, and uh, St. Patrick himself was a man who prayed in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Catholic Church might not like that, but that's the truth. He prayed in the Holy Ghost. And I, I, I tell you, the Holy Ghost is real. Tuesday morning of this week, I wrote, I have a little a mini legal pad. It's the half-size legal pad. 
And I felt a word just drop in on me. Uh, sometimes that happens when I'm preparing uh, to preach or, or just going through and meditating on the Lord. And I, I try to pray all day long. I'll say, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, as I walk through. And I'm really praying. I'm not taking the Lord's name in vain. And as I was pacing in here on my break, uh, and I don't know if I was outside or what, but I felt uh, a phrase come, and I might preach on, on Sunday morning, uh, but I felt the phrase basket case come to me. And I thought immediately of Paul being let down over the wall in a basket. And, and, and I wrote down three different references, scripture references, and, and wrote them down, wrote different working titles, but at the top I wrote basket case. I opened my, my phone last night as I was studying. I often put sermons on in the background or worship music in the background. And as I was studying for tonight, which wasn't this message, this dropped on me about an hour and a half ago. But uh, as, as I was studying, my, my probably one of my best friends in the world, Brother Tim Webb, started preaching. And, and I went to his live stream, listening to him. And he took a, a, he took a text from Acts chapter 9. And I said, oh, no, Lord. I was working on Sunday morning's message, actually, at the time. And I said, oh, no, Lord, he's going to preach my text. And he's going to think I stole it from him. He preached the exact text that the Lord had dropped in my spirit. We have not talked. I went through all of our conversations in the last week. We had not talked about it. He preached the exact text. He preached the other scriptures that I had wrote down. And his title was uh, a basket case, a basket case. You know what that tells me? I don't believe in coincidence. I say that all the time. The Holy Ghost is real. He is moving. He is touching. I, I'm tell, I, I, have got, I have been in services before where Brother Matt Jones, I, I remember this one specifically. One of the boys from Figby was home visiting his girlfriend, which went to our church. His name was Anthony Moody. He's a wonderful preacher. And, and, and he was there, and he said, Brother Anthony, won't you come up? Take your liberty. Take as much time as you want. I'm still going to preach after you. But, but whatever God tells you to say, Anthony came up. He said, I'm just going to do this. This is what's on my heart. He read his text, and he read it, and then he preached for about 10 or 15 minutes, and Brother Jones got right up after him. I don't know if you remember that. And he said, Church, I don't know what to do, but just to confirm what the Holy Ghost did. He goes, I manuscript my notes. I write them out word for word. And I'm going to preach what I already had. And he preached exactly what Brother Moody had just preached. The same text, the same points, and everything. You know what it is? The Holy Ghost wants to reach out to folks. He wants to help people. He wants to help you. And I'll tell you tonight, uh, we need to be aware that the Holy Ghost is real. That he wants to help us. He wants to strengthen us. He even wants to help us pray fervently and effectively. 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 is a, is a chapter that many will take. And they will, will say that the Apostle Paul was writing to the Corinthian church about uh, that the gift of tongues was not worth much. That it was to be set on the back burner. They'll even take a verse that says uh, 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 charity will cease and tongues will cease. And they'll say, see, when, when Revelation was written that tongues and speak, uh, uh, praying in the Holy Ghost is over. But, but I don't believe that. The Bible doesn't back that up. Because love hasn't stopped. That's ignorance. And that's reading into the scriptures something that you want to read into it. But tonight, I want to take us to 1 Corinthians 14. And I want to read something, a few of these verses to you. And I want to impress upon you the importance of praying in the Holy Ghost. I want to impress this upon your heart here tonight. And I promise I will try to hurry here tonight. Verse number 2 of 1 Corinthians 14. It says this. Paul writing to this church at Corinth that was a very flawed church that had all kinds of problems. All right? They had all kinds of problems. They asked him a bunch of questions. He answered them. And then he, as a, as a church planner, he had them on his heart as a spiritual father. He whipped them with his word. But I want to read this to you now. Verse number 2. For he that stand, uh, speaketh rather in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Verse number 14 of that same chapter. 
For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Verse number 18 now. I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than ye all. Does that one verse sound like Paul is saying you don't need to speak in tongues? He said, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than ye all. Yet in church, I want to read this in totality because I don't want to make these scriptures say something that they don't. Verse 19, yet in church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Verse 23 now, if therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are all mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, and he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. He was speaking to the Corinthian church that they did not get out of order in their church services. That is what this chapter is about. It is about orderly church services. We know being Pentecostals and growing up in this way, experientially, we know what he is talking about when he says at the end of this chapter, two, or by most three, would give a, a tongues, right? That doesn't mean two or three people speaking in tongues at the same time. That means two or three people giving messages in tongues and interpretation. I've been in this church as a pastor, and I've had to cut off the fourth message in tongues. You say, oh, how could you do that? How could you go against the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Ghost won't go against the Word of God. So if there is three messages in tongues, that is the limit for a church service. That's what Paul said. All right? And I'm talking about messages in tongues with interpretation. We should pray for the interpretation. Paul, though, he said in church, I would rather that you prayed in English. I would rather that you prophesied under the Spirit of God, that you would have a word from God, that you would preach boldly, that you would speak boldly. I would rather say five words in an understanding of those around me than 10,000 in tongues. Stay with me here, all right? I'm talking about praying in the Holy Ghost. So it is telling the church it is better to pray when everyone can hear you with understanding. It is better uh, uh, unless you speak in tongues when it is time for the gifts of tongues and interpretation. All right, that's what he was saying. So Paul makes the statement in verse number 18, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. Why did he say that? Why did he make that statement in the middle of that chapter? He was letting them know he's not denigrating that gift. He is not making that a lesser gift, that it was a gift that was very active in his life. Uh, he was saying, it is God's will that we pray in the Holy Ghost. All right, I don't want anybody in here to say, oh, pastor, don't want us praying and speaking in tongues in service unless it's for tongues and interpretation. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, what I am saying, that edifies yourself. And we should pray even to ourselves in that when the Spirit of God enables us to do that. But there is a danger in this that we get it backwards. Many people only pray in the Holy Ghost when they're in church. Hear me tonight. Many people, the only time they exercise that gift is in church. I want to tell you that Paul said when you are in church, Unless being used in the gift of tongues and interpretation or praying quietly to yourself, you are to pray with your own understanding. So as not to be a distraction, if someone unlearned or an unbeliever comes in, they think you're all mad, right? So what do we do here? How do we take this, praying in the Holy Ghost? Why did Paul write this? And why did Jude back it up? They backed each other up there. Uh, what, he, here's why. Paul knew the benefits of, of praying in the Holy Ghost. This is not charismatic. I want to give that disclaimer here tonight. They have stolen too many things from us 
and made us fearful of doing certain things because that's what they do. Uh, if somebody gets something right, it's okay, right? It's the, the things that they go off in error that we don't want to mimic or copy, okay? So here, here, why do we do this? Well, Jude wrote this, the reason we pray in the Holy Ghost it's because in verse number 20 of Jude 1, or Jude, it, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude wrote it. He said that, praying in the Holy Ghost. We've described already in a very abbreviated form what praying in the Holy Ghost is. It is when you get in the Spirit and the tongues begin to flow. When the Spirit of God is guiding your prayer. We all need that. Why do we need that? Because Jude said it. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. It builds your faith. Young folks, I know, I know several of you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because I've heard your very first words and some since then in the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you, that is not just for a service where you got all goosebumps and tingly. It is not just for camp meeting. It is not just for revival. It is not just for a, a youth camp. It is not just for youth conference. This is something that can be a daily part of your devotional life. You can build yourself up in the Holy Ghost by praying in the Holy Ghost. It does not have to be a one time a year experience or a once in a lifetime experience. It can be a daily flowing out of you. As you begin to understand the spirit and become a vessel that is more able to be flowed through, God the Holy Ghost can breathe through you. He can pray through you. I am not uh, right at this moment. I feel the Holy Ghost on me. And I tell you what the Holy Ghost does. It builds your faith. It strengthens you. It strengthens you. You see, it's not called the ministry ghost, is it? It's called the Holy Ghost. Huh? We've, we've, we've relegated him to the ministry ghost. But I tell you, his, the very first function of the Holy Ghost is to strengthen you, to live a holy life. Huh? You can be strengthened in the Holy Ghost. You build yourself up in the faith. If you are a roller coaster Christian, let me tell you something. Begin to pray until you break through every day and you will become strong. If you are governed by your emotions, pray every day until you break through to the Holy Ghost and you will strengthen yourself. Uh, we need to pray in the Holy Ghost because it builds up our faith. It strengthens us. It sensitizes us. Verse number 18 of Jude, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last day who should walk after their own ungodly lust. It keeps the mockers out. Huh? It keeps the mockers out. Sometimes when you're young, young men and, and probably young ladies too, when you go to your jobs, whenever, I know you're already working a job, but the rest of you is when you start working your jobs, there's going to be things that come up. People are going to mock your faith. They're going to mock how you live, what you do, and what you don't do. Huh? They're, they're going to go and party it up every weekend and then mock you to, for going to rally once a month and saying you go to church too much. And, and I always came back with you go to the bar too much. You smoke too much weed, all right? Any weed's too much. Any drinking's too much. You do too much of it, right? We, you can come back with it. But, but it will keep the mockers out of your head when you are prayed up, when you are uh, strengthened up. Though It will keep you sensitized to the Holy Ghost. You won't want to grieve Him when you're close with Him. When you're walking in the Spirit, you won't want to watch some of those things that you might be drawn to watch. Why? Because you don't want to harm that which dwells within you. It sensitizes you. It sanctifies you. Verse number 19. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. On that word sensual, it says those 
that are under the influence of gross passions and appetites. It sanctifies you. You keep that sensual spirit off of you. Here, in this context, the word sensual has nothing to do with what we would normally attribute it to. It describes the person who lives only by and for what he can get through his physical senses. And he lives this way selfishly. His motto is, if it feels good, do it. Or how can it be wrong if it feels so right? Uh, there, there are different people. Lord, help me here tonight, Brother Mike. I'm stepping out of the boat right here. But there are people who chase after a feeling constantly. There are people that travel from meeting to meeting. Uh, I, I even remember this discussion, we'll call it, that took place online about this heretic who called himself an apostle and he would prophesy over people. He's the one I talked about last year that said at the beginning of the year uh, that he was prophesying that there would be scandal in their church, that leaders would be caught up in things. And it came out a few months later that he was the leader that was caught up in an affair. And he said, see, I told you it was going to happen I said that's a self-fulfilling prophecy you hellion huh there there is there is people that chase that around I've got to hear another word I've got to get that feeling itch we have a lot of people in Pentecostal churches that chase after feelings just like King Saul they're running from strange fire to strange fire trying to get a word from the prophet but can I tell you something when you are full of the Holy Ghost when you are saved sanctified by his presence you don't have to run after strange fire because you got the real fire inside of you strange fire will never do but the real thing that comes from God is the only thing that will satisfy Whew. Lord help us tonight praying in the Holy Ghost it strengthens you it sensitizes you it sanctifies you you can look at your life and you can see years back and you say, man, if I would have done something like this years back, it would have bothered me so bad. You know what's happened? You've got away from the Holy Ghost. You've got away from that cleansing power that comes. And I'm telling you, the more you seek after him, the more he will be found of you. The more you will be sanctified. The more you will be loath to sin. The more you will be loath to grieve the Father, the one that sent the only begotten Son to die for your sin. When you get the Holy Ghost down deep inside of you. Those words that come out of you that are unpleasing to God will be unpleasing to you. Um, the more you get the Holy Ghost inside of you, those things that you watch will be unpleasant to you. Why? Because it grieves that which is inside of you. I'm telling you tonight, we gotta get full of the Holy Ghost. We gotta know that what God has given us is enough. God help us. I didn't know I'd feel like this tonight. Lord help us. We got to know what God wants for our life. Uh, we got to pray in the Holy Ghost. He can give us discernment. I'm telling y'all. He can give us discernment. He can, he can let us know uh, that when things aren't right in our life. He, when, when, when people that come into our life are traps from the pits of hell, he can give us discerning of spirits. When we're sensitized to the Holy Ghost, he can let us know. I'm telling you, I thank God that the Holy Ghost has guided me in my life. I'm thankful. There, there have been times even in my ministry, and I'm not talking about here, but I've told my own wife, there were women in the church that I would keep a wide berth around. I would stay away from them because I felt the Holy Ghost tell me, you better stay away from them. They got a feline spirit. I've been in my workplace, even where I work now, and the Holy Ghost has guided me and said you better stay away from that person. You know, they're going to try to get you to blaspheme. They're going to try to tear you down. Tear your faith down. I'm telling you tonight we need to pray in the Holy Ghost. We need to know what God wants us to know. Lord help us.
help us. I, I hardly know what to do with myself right now. Whew. We need. I'm telling you, if you ain't been filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. We are living in the last days. We are living. You need an up-to-date experience with God. We are living in the last days. God, would you let your church know how important the Holy Ghost is? Lord, help us. You need to know what God wants you to know. I'm telling you here tonight, I don't know how long we'll get to meet. I don't know how long we're going to be rejuvenated by fellowship. It could be next week and they cut us off again. They could be sending sheriffs around. They could be sending the health department around again. You've got to have something that will carry you through, even in isolation. Uh, Even when we were quarantined, the Holy Ghost of God met with my family in our our upstairs living room as we worshipped him together. I'm thankful that the Holy Ghost can go where your pastor can't go. It can go where your friends can't go. It can go where the doctors can't go. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost of God is for you. I don't know why I feel such an urgency here tonight. There are people that are so torn up by every situation. But I want to tell you here tonight, Get full of the Holy Ghost. Get full of the Holy Ghost. This week, Brother Scott mentioned it this week, has been a rough week for him. And it it, it has been a rough week for several in the church. It's been a rough uh, two years for several in the church. Uh, But even in his, his rough week, he sent me a text that I know was the Holy Ghost moving through through written form. I'm not saying it was on the level of the scriptures here but it encouraged me it was exactly what I needed and when I read it I knew that was God saying listen you better listen to this you're focusing on the wrong thing you're focusing on defeat but I want you to focus on victory about what I've done for you how I've moved in the church you're focused on numbers but I'm focused on doing something in your people. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is what we've got to have in this day and time to get us through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Lord, help us. It builds up our faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost brings an anointing. It brings an anointing. Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Get these words. In the spirit. You hear me? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, he's saying, pray in the spirit for me. That utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. I've, I've, I've often looked for a way to describe the anointing of God. I just put it in my own terms. And as I was reading this, even this afternoon, as I was reading this verse, I thought that for a preacher, that's what the anointing is. That God will give you a bold utterance. That's what the anointing is. That he will give you the utterance that you may proclaim the truths of God boldly. In this day and time that we live in, I've got, we just met some folks and they were precious, the Beats, B-E-E-T-S. And he goes and, and ministers at campuses. And his wife took a video this week on social media and shared it. And, and, and he was preaching, he had a big signboard. He's not one of those hate-filled preachers that go and try to stir up anger. He goes and tells them about the Word of God. And as he was preaching, he had a semicircle of people uh, of just, just laughing and mocking him. If we, if, if we ever, that's the generation that's coming up now. And I'm telling you, it's in my own generation. There is a, there is a lack of respect for authority, and that means there's a lack of respect for God because God has placed authority in, in this world. 
And so we need to understand that when we pray in the Holy Ghost, it brings an anointing to our lives, Sister Punky. It brings it. He said, he said after talking about uh, putting on the full armor of God, he says, pray, huh? pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit. He's saying you need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Paul encouraged them to pray in the Spirit for him, that utterance might be given unto him, that he might open his mouth boldly. I'm telling you, there is nothing like Holy Ghost inspired preaching. There is nothing like an anointing that comes on a man of God or a woman of God as they proclaim the truth. It can take a sorry message and make it a masterpiece. It can take few words and make them mighty and it can move crowds. The Holy Ghost anointing is what we need in our services. I'm not against studying. We are commanded by God's word to, stu to study and to show ourselves approved. But if I study for 11 hours every sermon and the Holy Ghost don't meet with me up here, I'm just spinning my wheels. We need the Holy Ghost to move in our services. When lost folks come in, I'm telling you, how do we get it? How do we get it? Well, one way is by praying in the Holy Ghost, being aware of it. And lastly here, Amanda, if you would come. We, we know that praying in the Holy Ghost, it builds up our faith and that it brings the anointing. But I'm telling you, praying in the Holy Ghost, it bestows his help. It's all right to yawn, bud. I'm tired too. Huh? It bestows his help. It bestows his help. Thank God for the help of the Holy Ghost. Thank God that he helps us. The Bible says in Romans 8, 26 and 27, many of you could probably quote this with me. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, our, our sickness or our weakness is what that means. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I have prayed often, and I've asked God, Lord, I don't want to pray against your will. I have prayed that often. I think it has something to do with my personality type. <laughs> but, but I have prayed, God, I don't want to pray against your will. Some people think everything in their mind is the will of God. Everything I'm going to do is the will of God. I'm telling you, I don't want to go against the will of God. I want to be cautious and careful with it. And so I ask God, God, I don't want to pray. Will you turn my heart? Will you turn my heart? Here's the way to pray according to the will of God. Right here. He says, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. Listen to this. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. If you want to know for sure, obviously we know that God desires that souls be saved, so we pray that way. God desires that souls be, uh, uh, that folks be sent for ministry, so we pray that way. God desires that we live a holy life. I understand that. We pray that way. But, man, when I pray in the Holy Ghost, I know I am praying according to the will of God. I am praying to the will of God. And I'm telling you, and when I, when I pray in the Holy Ghost and when I pray with my own understanding, I say, God, whatever, whatever you're going to do in my life, Whatever you're going to do in our church, Lord, I pray that my will matches your will. And I, I find that safety and solace in praying in the Holy Ghost because I know I am praying according to his will. According to his will. We ask God, God, will you do this? God, will you, will you give us a, a, an anointing? God, will you give us power? God, will you give us favor? Sometimes we don't know how to pray, though. 
Sometimes situations come and we're overwhelmed. And we say, Lord, we say, Lord, I don't know what you want in this situation. Here's what I want. But I'm going to pray like Jesus prayed and said, nevertheless, not my will, but what your but your will be done. But even when we come to that place where we don't know how to pray, when we don't know how to pray, the Bible says that the Spirit helps our infirmities. It helps our, un, our lack of knowledge, our lack uh, of strength. It knows, and, and, and He knows rather, and He makes intercession for us. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, the Spirit is making intercession for us. We don't pray to our, with our own understanding. We don't pray with our own understanding. But we pray with the Holy Ghost. I'm tell, I want to tell you tonight, we, we, we are part of a Pentecostal church here. And if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance, you are not a less than Christian. Hear me. I, I, I really don't know who, who all has experienced that. But let me tell you something. He has it for you. It is not just for some people that are Christian. You're, you're just as saved as I am. You have the Holy Ghost dwelling inside of you if you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, right? He comes in when you're saved. He lives inside of you when you're saved. But there is something that, that goes beyond that with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's like filling up a bottle of water and, and, and like this and then taking that vessel that's full of that water and you dunking it in the ocean. That's what it's like being baptized. It means immersed in the Holy Ghost. You're dunking it down in the ocean. There is something powerful that happens to believers. Uh, Paul, Paul, I believe it was Paul or Peter, one man, Peter, he, he said, have you received since ye believed? He acknowledged that they were believers, that they were right with God. But have you received the Holy Ghost uh, since you believed? There is more. There is more in store. God wants you to have it. The devil does not want you to have uh, that praying in the Holy Ghost. He doesn't want you to have the power that comes. I'm telling you, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're listening on, online right now, you don't have to be in a church to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. It can fall in your bedroom. It can fall in your living room. It can fall in your prayer closet. You don't have to be satisfied with getting up to a certain line and a certain level, but God can take you through. God can carry you through. Praise the Lord. Stand with me tonight or I'll preach all night. Lord, help us. God, I love you. I'm thankful for you. I pray, God, that you'll move during this altar call. That, God, folks that aren't filled with the Holy Ghost will be filled. Folks that, that have maybe stopped short of where they could be in you are reminded and are drawn to a deeper walk with you. This isn't to say that some are more spiritual than others. Lord, you know our hearts. God, you know the truth of all that. But God, what it is saying is we should want everything that you have for us. We should desire it. We should earnestly seek after it. It shouldn't be a once a year thing. It shouldn't be a once a, a decade thing. But God, it can be an everyday thing where we pray until the power of God prays through us. God, would you do it in our church? Lord, I don't want another dead service. I don't want one more dead service. I don't want another service where a lost person comes in and don't even feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost. God, would you move in us and on us. Lord, will you stir us here tonight. We love you, Lord. We're thankful, God, for your presence. Move in the altars, Jesus' name. Amen. These altars are open. Won't you come? Raise your hands to God and just give him praise. Thank him for what he's done. If you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can raise your hands and just say one time, Lord, will you fill me with the Holy Ghost? And then just begin to praise Him and see what God will do in your life. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your I
I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be on the teacher on the youth group and the preachers let it rain 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 in our prayer meeting in our worship in our choir and kids churches let it rain 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 the floodgates of heaven, won't you let it rain, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven, oh we let it rain, let it rain, on the elders, on the deacons, on the strong ones and the weak ones. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. On the pastor, on the teachers, on the youth group, all the preachers. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Oh, open the flood. Of heaven, won't you let it rain? Oh, let it rain. Fill our soul, open the floodgates of heaven. Won't you let it rain? Let it rain. Oh, open the floodgates of heaven. soul is hungry, let it rain. Oh, open the floodgates of heaven. Won't you let it rain? Let it rain. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you. Won't you let it rain? 
let it rain. Oh, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you. Won't you let it rain? Let it rain. Yes, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you. Won't you let it rain? Let it rain. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you. Won't you let it rain? Let it rain on the elders, on the deacons, on the strong ones and the weak ones. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. On the pastor, on the teachers, on the youth group and the leaders. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Won't you let it rain? Let it rain. Oh, open the floodgates of heaven. Won't you let it rain? Let it rain. In our prayer meeting, in our worship, in our choir and kids' churches. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain on our elders and the deacons, on the strong ones and the weak ones. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Oh, open the floodgates of heaven. Won't you let it rain? Let it rain. The floodgates of heaven, won't you let it rain? Let it rain. Gotta have your anointing, cause when I do, then it changes everything. Gotta have your anointing, your anointing. I gotta have your anointing, cause when I do, then it changes everything. Gotta have your anointing, your anointing. Oh, gotta have your anointing, cause when I do, then it changes everything. Gotta have your anointing, your anointing. Oh, gotta have. You're anointed, cause when I do, then it changes everything. Gotta have your anointing, your anointing. We need you to open the floodgates of heaven. Won't you let it rain? Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven won't you let it rain let it rain it's me it's me i need you lord i need you lord i need you won't you let it rain let it rain oh i need you lord i need you lord i need you won't you let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven oh let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven won't you let Gotta have your 
your anointing when I do then it changes everything gotta have your anointing your anointing gotta have your anointing cause when I do then it changes everything gotta have your anointing your anointing on the one on our prayer meeting in our worship and kids churches let it rain 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 on the pastor on the teachers on the youth group all the preachers let it rain 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 open the floodgates of heaven won't you let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain i need you lord i need you lord i need you won't you let it rain let it rain i need you lord i need you lord i need you won't you let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven and let Let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven, and let it rain, let it rain. I need you, Lord, I need you, Lord, I need you. 